For many years, humans have strived to create a form of virtual being knowledgeable in everything that the average person knows and able to assist mankind in a variety of tasks, ranging from the very menial ones like arranging files in a particular order in a computer to advanced ones like writing code for an important program. Our search for something of this nature led to the creation of artificial intelligence. Now, though artificial intelligence, also called AI, is a term that has been tossed around a number of times in different places, it is still something that remains relatively new to some people. That being said, I will briefly define AI and give a short timeline of its history. Artificial intelligence, as defined by SimplyLearn.com, is a method of making a computer, a computer-controlled robot or a software think intelligently like the human mind. AI is accomplished by studying the patterns of the human brain and by analyzing the cognitive process. The outcome of these studies develops intelligent software and systems. This gives you an insight into what creators of AI hope to achieve and what AI is capable of doing based on how it is made. AI has been around for some time and can be traced back to the year 1956, when John Carthy first used the term AI and also held the first AI conference at Dartmouth College, Hanover in New Hampshire in the United States. Following that successful conference, the first general purpose robot named Shaky was built in 1969 and in 1997, a supercomputer named Deep Blue was created and set against the world chess champion in a match that it won. These successful creations opened a floodgate of sorts for innovations in AI creation. In 2002, the first commercially successful robot vacuum cleaner was created. Between the years of 2005 and 2019, we have had speech recognition, robotic process automation, or RPA, a dancing robot, smart homes, and other innovations make their debut. And during the pandemic year of 2020, Beatty releases the Linear Fold AI algorithm to medical and scientific and medical teams developing a vaccine during the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. The algorithm can predict the RNA sequence of the virus in only 27 seconds, which is 120 times faster than other methods. Continued progress is being made in the field of AI, and the latest evidence of this progress is now seen in the creation of ChatGPT, an AI from the OpenAI company. This latest artificial intelligence has taken the world by storm because of its unique features and ability to do things that none of its predecessors could effectively achieve. We will talk a bit about what ChatGPT is and the events that led to its creation. According to The Guardian, ChatGPT is a prototype dialogue-based AI chatbot capable of understanding natural human language and generating impressively detailed human-like written text. It is the latest evolution of the GPT, which means Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, which is a family of text-generating AIs. The motivation that led to the birth of ChatGPT has its root in an idea within Silicon Valley in the year 2015. That year, current Twitter CEO Elon Musk founded the startup OpenAI Foundation together with other Silicon Valley investors, including technology venture capitalist Sam Altman. According to a blog post released at the time, Musk said that the research center would advance digital intelligence in the way that is most likely to benefit humanity. Meanwhile, Musk has since left the board of the foundation after it was discovered that OpenAI was accessing Twitter's database for training, but this hasn't stopped the foundation from making giant strides in AI creation with ChatGPT being its most significant work. Concerning how it works, the system is designed to provide information and answer questions through a conversational interface. The AI is trained on a huge sample of texts taken from the internet. In a statement from the research body, OpenAI said, and I quote, the dialogue format makes it possible for ChatGPT to answer follow-up questions, admit its mistakes, challenge incorrect premises, and reject inappropriate requests. Meanwhile, users of the chatbot have begun giving their opinions on its possible uses, with many seeing it as an alternative to Google, because it is capable of providing descriptions, answers, and solutions to complex questions, including ways to write code and solve layout problems and optimization queries. This has gotten the alarm bells ringing at Google's headquarters, but I will talk more about that later in this video. Some applications of the chatbot include generating content for websites, answering customer inquiries, providing recommendations, as well as creating automated chatbots. Sam Altman, who was one of the co-founders of the research body behind ChatGPT and who is now its CEO, said that the system was an early demo of what's possible. He continued by saying, soon you will be able to have helpful assistants that talk to you, answer questions, and give advice. Later, you can have something that goes off and does tasks for you. Eventually, you can have something that goes off and discovers new knowledge for you. Owing to the innate ability of humans to exploit, these useful applications outlined by Altman have been manipulated by people to suit their needs. There is an increasing fear in the education sector that students will use the chatbot to cheat in their exams, and this fear has been confirmed as valid. Take a look at this. Aside from eliminating countless hours of research, ChatGPT can form opinions on very specific topics at a user's request. 
This is something that no search engine can do. But that's just the beginning. It's much more than that. There's a bountiful amount of reports from around the web of people using ChatGPT to cheat on exams, from statistics to history. And I personally know people that are using it to write code for their computer science assignments in just minutes. It raises an interesting question concerning our education system. The old adage that schooling is largely a test for memory and not intelligence comes to mind. As AI systems infiltrate society, perhaps critical thinking will be more valued. If it's any consolation, Robert Hansen, an economics professor at George Mason University, ran an interesting test. He blindly graded a group of economics essays, one of which was the raw output from ChatGPT. How did it do? Well, using the AI to write your essay will give you a grade tied to the bottom 20 students in his class. So not A plus work, but that is still amazing. A largely general AI system is as good as a poor university student. As I've said so many times, AI progress is exponential, so in two years, the situation may look completely different. At this point, it is no news that the chat GPT can write elaborate, highly detailed essays, debug codes, and solve maths problems. These are all academic challenges faced by students in school, and now having a virtual assistant of sorts with extensive knowledge of these has struck fear into the hearts of teachers for the sake of education. Though its ability to give legible answers to questions has been welcomed, especially in places where there is a shortage of teachers, there is the fear that the free and accessible tool would be used more often than necessary by students and would ultimately lead to laziness among students with regards to putting in the academic work for good grades. Austin Ambrose, who is a middle school teacher in Idaho in the U.S., said, and I quote, students are going to think and use this chatbot as if it is a know-all. That's because it's a technology that is creating these things that sound really legitimate, they are going to assume that it is and take it at face value. This would pose a significant threat to the students who use it. And here's why. Because it was trained with data up until 2021, the chatbot is simply unable to provide factual up-to-date answers. Sometimes it provides minor inaccuracies and struggles with confusingly worded questions, which could also lead to incorrect answers. Altman acknowledged the limitations of ChatGPT in a tweet where he has said, and I quote, ChatGPT is incredibly limited but good enough at some things to create a misleading impression of greatness. It's a mistake to be relying on it for anything important right now. Beverly Pell, who is an advisor on technology for children and a former teacher based in Irvine, California in the U.S. said, and I quote, there's a lot of cheap knowledge out there. I think this could be a danger to education, and it's not good for kids. And that becomes an issue for the teacher to teach the students what is appropriate and what's not appropriate in the search for knowledge. Whitney Shishu, also an advisor, said, With a tool like this at their fingertips, it could muddy the waters when evaluating a student's actual writing capabilities because you're giving kids potentially a tool where they could misrepresent their understanding or prompt. The truth of the matter with regards to education is that with the inception of the chat GPT, students cannot be made to stay away from using it, and as a result, and as previously suggested by the educators, the students should be taught on how to use the chatbot correctly, with emphasis on the word correctly. Despite the fear in some quarters that the chat GPT would phase out human educators from classrooms, some teachers have seen the chatbot as a tool and opportunity to improve education. There have been sayings that the chatbot could be used as a starting point for students when they face writer's block or could be used to get examples of what an answer looks like. Teachers have also said that it could prompt faculty members to update their curriculum to accommodate such technologies openly in the classroom and for ChatGPT to act as a co-teacher. Parr said, and I quote, the ultimate goal is really that we want students to grow and expand their skills. There's a need for the curriculum to continue to be reviewed and adapt to the goal of keeping pace with the evolution of different tools and technologies. The fact that ChatGPT has no morals means it can answer sensitive questions without any show of empathy and can give vital information to the wrong group of people. Check this out. A user asked the AI to find the vulnerability in the code of an Ethereum smart contract. ChatGPT thinks it's helping, but in reality, it's giving information that it really shouldn't. There's also been the creation of a fake New York Times. The AI would write full articles using tweets as prompts and compile them into a website that looked like the New York Times. One user decided to push the system and remove safety limits. The AI was then able to explain how to make a Molotov cocktail, and this was in the form of a step-by-step -step tutorial, something that obviously is a violation of OpenAI's content policy. When it comes to the issue of scam emails, we all know that a big red flag is a fact that most of those kind of emails are poorly typed. But with the introduction of the chat GPT, this might phase out as the chatbot can type these phishing emails correctly and legibly without even knowing of its involvement in a potential scam. 
if scammers utilized this service rendered by ChatGPT, it could cause a massive problem that would have caused significant damage before being solved. Now even Google is alarmed at the threat ChatGPT poses to the company, and their fear is valid. Before the advent of the ChatGPT, Google had been the point of contact, the all-knowing search engine that was the hope of the common man. But the traction which ChatGPT has gained since its release has shocked the tech giants and forced them to consider a complete overhaul of its AI applications. You see, Google thinks that the ChatGPT would open the door for better AI chatbots that would ultimately erode the use of Google's search box, thereby forcing them out of the search engine business. Speaking to the What Next TV podcast, Alex Kantrowitz, who is the founder of Big Technology, said, and I quote, it's not going to replace search. But even if it takes 5% of Google's market share, that's a huge number. And if a single chatbot can slash a big tech's market share by 5%, you can imagine what would happen when more improved versions of that chatbot come into the market. In all these, an inevitable yet sad event is that some people will lose their jobs because of this and certain professionals will become ineffective in the labor market as their duties will be taken over by AI. The question now is how will people be reabsorbed into the labor market to avoid an increase in the unemployment rate? Besides, despite the applaudable advancements in AI creation, there are just some things that only humans know how to do best. 